Welcome back to my channel. Today we'll be discussing Gold Grey by Lee Green. Now before we get started, there will be spoilers, so if you don't want to be spoiled in this manhwa, go ahead and click off now. No worries, I'll catch you next time. Now for those of you left behind, let's go over some content warnings. And buckle in because there are a lot for this one. There may be references to rape, sexual assault, pandemics, confinement, kidnapping, male pregnancy, dehumanization, murder, child abuse, child neglect, death, abortion, terrorism, corruption, major medical illness, prejudice, BDSM, gang and or mafia activity, car accidents, blood, violence, non-consenting medical treatment, torture, manipulation, suicide, possible statutory rape, self-loathing, victim blaming, traumatic birth, sex work and or prostitution, drugging, blackmail, and human experimentation, as all these things do appear in the manhwa. Whew! Alright, now if that's your level of spice, let's go ahead and get started. Now, as always, we'll start out with a quick synopsis. Lee Rain has dreams of becoming an actor. He can sing, dance, and act, but having grown up poor and under mysterious circumstances, he's had to claw his way up to achieve the bare minimum, much less his dreams of stardom. Along with the daily struggle of surviving, Rain has an odd ability to smell what he calls, quote, perverts, end quote. They smell so good. Unfortunately, they're drawn to Rain like flies. Frustrated, Rain has finally saved up enough for a Hail Mary. He plans to drop everything and travel to the United States, hoping to make it onto Broadway or die trying. On the other side, there's Juan Lucas. He's a perfect alpha, bred and raised from the finest stock to take over Ruin Joy Industries one day. Unfortunately, following his father's death, Lucas learns of a disgusting stipulation left in his father's will for the company. The next president will be the child that can produce an alpha heir. The only way to create a perfect alpha is by an alpha having a baby with an omega. But due to a pandemic that swept through the world, omegas went extinct. But Rowan Joy has a seedy underbelly. Hidden from the public eye, they've managed to create artificial omegas, which they raise from fetuses to adulthood, and upon giving birth, they die within a week to prevent the secret from getting out. Lucas is prepared to artificially inseminate an omega to take his role as company president. Unfortunately, the building where all of the omega research took place is destroyed by none other than Joshua, a subpar alpha and Lucas's half-brother. With his brother vying for his position, Lucas is desperate to find an omega and make an alpha heir. But with all of the known Omegas gone, there's little to no hope until Lucas meets Rain. Now to start this off, let's talk about the artwork. It's stunning. Some parts of it aren't my favorite, like how the lips are drawn and shaded because they look constantly chapped, but it's undeniable that it's beautiful. Rain in particular is absolutely stunning. I also adore the way colors used. It's relatively rare to see a black and white manhwa, and this one is almost entirely black and white minus the side stories, except for a few key or emotional panels. One skillful way color is used is in the character's eye colors. Rain has stunning blue eyes, while Lucas has gold, and these two striking colors highlight points of intense emotion. I love when color is used that way, and this is no exception. I also have to say I love the story premise for this. So often with Omegaverse stories, Omegas and Alphas are typically rare, but in this case, the virus and terrorism have dwindled the number of Omegas to zero. It's such a unique concept and setting for an Omegaverse story and broadens the world beyond just a relationship between two people, which I really enjoy. Unfortunately, it also sets up a lot of dubious consent as Rain is a, quote, hot commodity, end quote, and is dehumanized since he's an Omega. Those particular tags don't bother me, but I want to make sure to be clear that it does appear in this work for those who may not be interested. With that being said, there's some beautifully written passages in this. There are a lot of references to water, ocean waves, and the like, which all intertwine into a beautiful moment when Rain overcomes a dire fate and survives to see his family in the end. I've reread this scene ten times and still tear up reading it. It's gorgeous, and I'm jealous that I didn't come up with it myself. But I'm so glad Lee Green did because I don't think I could do it justice. This series is worth reading just for that section following the birth because it's some of the best emotional writing I've ever read in a manhwa. If that wasn't enough to tempt you though, we are blessed with a whole heap of after stories with lots of romantic child rearing, the messy relationship between Joshua and Noelle, and more light-hearted comedic drama from our favorite main couple. This series truly is the gift that keeps on giving, which is a massive plus in my book. I will say though, Joshua and Noel are more toxic than even our main couple, 
but I find their sex scenes to be the sexiest in here. <laughs> I'm a huge hater of dirty talk during sex, but Joshua has got game, let me just tell you. He might be one of the few characters in Smutty Manwa that I wanted to talk dirty because everything he said was delish. Now with all that being said, I think it's pretty clear by now <laughs> that I'm pretty biased toward Omegaverse stories, especially when there's male pregnancy, child rearing, and all that kind of stuff involved. This is no exception. It's beautiful, well written, has an exciting and unique premise, and has so much extra content after the main story that you'll be satisfied for a long time to come. It doesn't get much better than this. So, have you read Gold Grey? If so, what do you think? Do you agree with my assessment? Do you not? Let me know and comment below. Otherwise, I'll catch you next time. Bye!